been a while since I did one of these Z80 computer project update videos, so um, I'll do one now. And there has been progress in all different sorts of ways and in different sort of um, areas, but I'm actually not all that further with constructing the actual computer. But the problem from last time was I had these cartridge connectors, but I didn't have fitting circuit board blanks. Um, and some have arrived by now, which are these. And these could do fine for the smaller cards. I have to cut them off here. And that would give me a fair bit of area, actually. It would be nicer to have... Basically these that I showed in the last video, but double-sided, and I ordered those, but these didn't came in, uh, come in. So, yeah, these will do fine as the back plane, though. This is just about big enough. No, it would be actually nicer to use these hold-down lugs too. Um, I have some larger bits of circuit board material. Um, maybe I'll use that instead. I'm not entirely sure. So, but even if I had the circuit board blanks, I couldn't really do much with them because I want to do the computer on double-sided circuit board. I think doing this, and this is what the last time I tried this showed me, um, using single-sided board, it's just one big nightmare. It's incredibly hard to lay out, um, and you have you end up with boards having 20, 30 bridges on them, and it's it's quite limiting. So I I want to go double sided. I think for a project like this, this probably makes a lot of sense. So on the double sided circuit board front, I've got. This, which is um, photo resist, sort of paint, it comes in in a syrupy sort of liquid, and you have to dilute it down and then apply it, um, expose it, develop it, um, and then etch. And I did some experiments with that using these microscope slides here, and this still has some stuff on it actually. Um, but I used these microscope slides because yeah they're just convenient things to use um, and it shouldn't be much different doing it on copper than doing it on the these microscope slides um, although I also tried it on copper uh, worked just the same and what I used for exposing them was um, my EEPROM eraser but um, this is also quite limited because this only has a 4 watt-ish bulb in it and um, but oh, there's actually still a still a piece of transparency in it from from exposing it. So um, this is quite limited because yeah, it's an old, not too fancy from a razor, and it only has a couple of watts of lamp in it. Um, and it's also it illuminates the stuff quite unevenly. So what I want to do for going that route is basically get or use some of these lamp holders and then use UV bulbs. This is not a U it is a UV bulb but the wrong kind of wavelength actually. Um, and basically build a bigger ex um, a bigger development or exposure chamber. So I could basically put down the um, printer transparency and the board and then have it uniformly illuminated and I'll just do that with these lamps uh, gas gas discharge lamps and then um, one of these old-fashioned um, uh, lamp chokes I think they're called it's just a coil of wire that you put in and these have the starter inside them so you only need this and, and a lamp this is for two lamps I think I'll go with um, two lamps like this and then another one here then have the circuit board underneath and it's all will all go into a wooden box or something um, and that should work quite well 
I've seen this um, in other people's projects. This should work fairly nicely, actually. So this is a work in progress, but um, there is definitely progress. Then the other idea I had for making double-sided circuit boards is, and I have um, seen this done. I'll just put up, put away the uh, e-probe eraser here, so I have some space on the bench. Um, the other way I've seen this done is people use these something like this, which is um, an unfinished laser engraver. And what you do is you take your piece of circuit board and you put on some sort of paint. And then you just laser out the, the uh, bits that you don't want to be... Um, that you want to be etched away. And I don't know how well this works, um, but I wanted to build one of these laser engraver cutter sort of things anyway. So I did go ahead and build one. And this actually works fairly well. Um, I'm having some issues with the, with the end stops, but this is a software issue. The signal and everything's coming through fine. Um, the laser module is actually here. I haven't tried this. I, I glued a pen to it earlier and let it draw some things, which worked surprisingly well, actually. Um, but yeah, I haven't tried the, la the laser module. This is a 2.5 watt laser module, which should be plenty enough. Um, because I don't have any laser safety goggles yet, and um, I don't want to power on the laser. Uh, my eyesight's bad enough as it is. I don't need any holes burned into my retinas. Um, so, yeah. Laser. As um, soon as the laser glasses come in, I'll probably start messing around with that. Um, yeah, there's some cable looms and stuff. This is just one of these Arduino CNC shields with an Arduino below it. And works okay enough. Um, I might do a video on this in the, in the future. But this is a, a model that's available on the internet, so I didn't design most of these mechanical bits myself. Um, you can find that on Thingiverse. I, is it called 3DP Laser Engraver or something? I don't remember it, but um, get that. And it's nice because it has like built-in belt tensioners and stuff. Uh, it's fairly, uh, it's fairly nice. So, and also I went for a relatively large platter because I can imagine, depending how, how well this works and what sort of laser I'm going to put in, I could easily imagine using this for other things, um, like maybe front panels or something. Or I, I bet you there's all kinds of stuff that uh, I could do with this. So, yeah, this is the, the other sort of way. Um that I could make double-sided PCBs by just putting the blank in here into some sort of fixture, fixture and then exposing one side or burning away the paint on one side and flipping it around, um, burning away the other side. And it would hopefully align well because the machine would home each time and then remember its position. And since the board is in the same fixture every time, it should come out fairly consistently. Um, I think people do it, do this this way. I've have I have seen it done before, so this should work. Um, but I'll put some updates um, on this out in the future. What this doesn't have is the um, power supply and monitoring stuff, and I'll probably feature this in another video um, because this has yet to. I mean, I yet have to finish this and get the end stops working. But, yeah, we'll see. So, okay, what else? What else? Um, yeah, clock circuits. Here's some stuff I built some time ago. So the last Z80 computer had an issue with its clock generation, which didn't work very well. And this is... I, I tried just um, using a lot of different... <clears throat> clock generator circuits. Um, this is uh, something I learned here. This is the parallel 
sort of clock generator. I'll put a schematic up here. So, um, and I used a standard TTL gauge, which doesn't work. Or, yeah, this doesn't work well. So, um, this is something I tried with the last one, I think, too. And, but I was fairly unclear why this didn't work, but um, now I know why. So this is progress. And this is the same sort of arrangement, but this um, is supposed to have a CMOS, a TTL-compatible CMOS in it. And this works fine. It has also a bunch of decoupling and stuff. Um, and adjustable capacitance is here. Uh, more decoupling down here. Um, then... I tried um, cleaning up the waveform with another chip, which didn't work. Um, I was trying to feed it into a comparator, but it, it, as it turns out, you need a very fast comparator for that. And, yeah, not good. I don't know how I even got the idea, but this doesn't work well. So, then to the last board. What this is, is basically this here is a series arrangement, and I'll put a schematic up here, of the same clock generator circuit, and this works fairly nice. And then this goes down wire, wire to this D-type flip-flop. Um, this never, never mind the weird numbers, this is a 7474. Um, it's just um, East German production, so it's uh, yeah, it has different numbers on it. Um, this is one of the ways you can really get cheap TTL circuits um, these days by buying new old stock East German or Russian um, chips. These are um, these are also former um, Eastern Bloc um, as well as these, but this is modern. This is um, yeah. Uh, an HCT. Yeah, but what this does is basically divides down the clock frequency. And I thought the clock was fairly bad on this because it had a lot of overshoot and it looked like it would, well, what's the word? Um, sort of oscillate on top like a sine wave. But I think now this has to do with my scope probing because if I reduce the frequency if I divide it down to 1 megahertz. This is a 4 megahertz crystal, by the way. Um, then it works fairly well. It, the waveform looks much nicer. And also, if I probe this properly with the... Um, with the scope probes the right way. So... Is connecting ground to focus here. It's not doing it. There. With the ground connected here and the actual signal going in here. Um, then it reduces the um, the distortion on the waveform quite a bit compared to me putting on the clips and probing down like this. Um, and there's actually there's a um, Jim Williams, I think it's an article or a application note or something um, on how to probe high-speed signals properly, and it shows just the thing I'm seeing on my clock signal, um, uh, and it puts it down to bad probing. So um, I'll probably put some pictures here, here and there of what it looks like with bad and with good probing, and we'll go into all of this proper when we look at building the actual clock card but this is just a sort of little rambly teasery video um, where I show some of the progress I've made so we'll go into this properly and yeah the reason why there is no clock generator or anything else card yet is because I want to do them double-sided I have to do them double-sided because these are double-sided headers so um Although I could do the clock generator card on just one of these card edge rows, but yeah. Then I have a clock card and nothing else, which also doesn't get me very far, does it? So, yeah. Um, clock card in the making, all sorts of ways of making double-sided circuit boards, working on it. 
Um, yeah, I think that's really all the progress on the Z80 computer front over the last um, month. It's got to say, additionally, I'm um, more busy than usual at the moment. A um, lot of lab work, a lot of research. So, progress has been slow. Um, I, and it's, it doesn't look like it's getting any better anytime soon. So, progress will be slow. And, um, yeah. But, yeah, this is, a, it's, this is a hobby for me. And, yeah, it will, it will take time, but we'll eventually get there. I'm certain of it. So, yeah, um, I'll see you on the next one, and I hope we'll do some double-sided circuit boards then. And maybe build a clock generator card or the power supply or something. Yeah, so, bye for now.